Here inside the gymnasium at Eastern View High School, we're celebrating the Eastern View Cyclones wrestling team. In fact, that celebration has continued now for a few weeks. Why? Because the Cyclones recently won the state 4A title. And here on behalf of the Culpeper Media Network, we're here to honor that success. I'm Mark O'Connell, along with the full cast of team members, Jeff Stanfield and Johnny Krawchuk. We're gonna start our uh, program with uh, meeting the head coach of the Cyclones to my left, Eric Brown. Coach Brown, great to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for doing this. This is a great honor for our guys. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, thanks for joining us. You guys deserve all the attention you get now. Uh, and the first thing I want to say to you is congratulations on quite an achievement. Well, I think we've known each other a long time. You know how much time we put into this, and I guess that's the, the sweeter part of it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, we've been talking a long time about wrestling, and you've been involved for a long time. And um, You know, when it comes to the team winning the state title, and by the way, let me just remind the viewing audience that uh, Eastern View uh, went down to Portsmouth, uh, Virginia, to Churchland uh, High School, which was the host of both the 3A and 4A state tournament this year. I might want to ask you about that split as well. Uh, that's not the most important thing, but however, Eastern View won the 4A state title. Falk here was a runner-up. Last year, Falk here won the title. You guys were a runner-up. No, Falk here didn't win it. No, I'm sorry, Great Bridge won it and there at the end, and then Falk here was second, you guys were third. Okay. But here's my thing, and we've been talking wrestling for a long time, Coach. In my view, uh, it wasn't a matter of if the Cyclones would ever win a state title. I felt like it was just a matter of when they would win a title. Well, uh, we've, we've had that same sentiment for a while as well, <laughs> but it's kind of been, you know, that bitter ending for the last couple of years leading in, um, coming out with a runner-up, coming out with thirds, and, and that type of thing over the last three or four years has really kind of been – disheartening but luckily enough with the with the constant effort that our guys put in you know we were fortunate enough to get get where we needed to be this time um it has been a long road um i kind of had the same sentiment that you know all the time that we put in it had to come about mm -hmm. but you know you get you go down there and you lose out you get smacked in the mouth every <laughs> year you kind of you kind of have to deal with that and and then man up and come back and and thank goodness that um you know I guess it's a testament to the guys we've had before us because we've definitely had a good program for the last, you know, eight years. We've been very solid. We came in uh, 10 years ago when the school originated mm -hmm. and, and did a lot of things, but it definitely is, is you know, been a build up to this. And, you know, uh, our boys know that they share this state title with the, with the crews before them because without those guys in here and working out with each other, there's no way we could have gotten to this point either. So. Let me ask you a question. Last year, it seemed really disappointing that uh, you guys didn't win the title. It seemed like you were ahead all the way through the championship finals and then things, sort of the bottom fell out. How difficult was it for the team to regroup from that psychological setback and come back and say, you know what, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna be fine this year and, and we're gonna put that behind. I can. I, you have to hit up my, my guys because they can only answer that question. I know that, um, you know, as a coach, you're in there and you're, and you're trying to put that behind you. But as far as my personal battle with it, you know, that was something that, that I had to wake up to every morning and go to bed to every night for, for mm -hmm. pretty much a majority of that year. So it definitely wasn't an easy, easy step to get past. Um, to be able to come in last year and put 60 plus points on Great Bridge at the, the at the con, at the regional, and then to come back and, and end up falling you know behind and letting them get passes, like we said, it it really it was a true team effort this year. Everybody went in and, and manned up and just fought and, and mm -hmm. you know did everything they could to put the points on the board. And that was really one of our conversations before we left was you know we're we're going in here. Um, let's be realist. You know if we bring back. 12 state titles individual that's great but in the real world that's not going to happen and we've got to realize that you guys got a man back up when things don't go your way and come back through and that was just that was the whole thing saturday morning was just amazing so you know had to be i mean the uh euphoria with that yeah what, what sort of reaction have you have you received uh, not only from the wrestling community but people uh, associated with eastern view and culver county what do they said to you coming back? Uh, i get uh 
of course, with my son coming home, he tells me he feels like he's a, a you know superstar mm -hmm. now. He gets a lot of pats on the back and stuff like that. Um, people that he doesn't know, you know, congratulating him, Dylan Worth, and and even all of our other guys. I mean, they've been walking around on cloud nine here lately. Um, won't mention where, but we had we had our lunch picked up for us one day when we went out to lunch after or during work day, and and that was kind of nice, you know. These guys, I mean. To bring it back home means a big deal to Culpepper, and, and I, you know we're we're very proud of our accomplishment. But just the, I think that the community, I hope that the community, sees the family-oriented style, style format that our program has always tried to build upon, and you know that's that's really been our our bigger push with these guys is to realize that you're out there for the you know fighting for the greater good than just yourself, mm -hmm. um, and and you know. For them to come back home and be received like they were has it's just been really great. Coach, you've done such a great job with this interview. You could have done it without me. You could <laughs> have flown solo. That. Look, before we go and meet uh, and, and meet some of your wrestlers, uh, one of the things that has stood out about our conversations when you talk about your team and its success is that you've been able to take uh, special pride in knowing, to use your term, that your kids, your program, it, it's a homegrown bunch of group. Right. Um, you know, as as you know, with our history with you and Ethan and all, we've been doing this a long time. I, I had somebody ask me the other day, you know, how long we've been coaching between youth league and high school, mm -hmm. going on about 17, 18 years. Mm -hmm. And the main focus that I've always tried to sell to our guys is the importance of bringing home a title out of our own youth group and out of our own mm -hmm. room. Um, won't point fingers, won't say anything big and push, you know, try to disrespect anybody. But through the history of most of the states, you always see where everybody that gets on top has this kid come in, this kid come in, and these guys just, they prove they have proven what I was so drastically trying to gain with this situation is the fact that if you put the work in and that we do it as a family type group, these boys, most of these guys that are on this program have been together for at least five plus years. Mm -hmm. Most of them have been together for eight years. Um, you know, when you're driving on a Saturday or Sunday to PA or New Jersey and you're loading the vehicles up and you got three or four in a caravan going, everybody's stopping to eat afterwards and you know having a good time the boys are you know getting their pool time and their and their hangout time in during the summer when we go into these tournaments and stuff it's that family atmosphere and that building and bonding that mm -hmm. just i think that that personally is so much more of a a factor in what happened this this year with the fact that and not that we haven't had it in the past we've had it every year in the past but the fact that these boys were in there they were fighting for each other you know they were, they had they had kind of disregard the fact of, of what they were going to get for themselves we knew that what would come would come but if it did fall through that they you know all of them manned back up and just came back through and, and fought like crazy to make things happen and like i said saturday morning was a true testament to that but that homegrown aspect is kind of something we you know have tried to push over the last 10 years being here and you know i think thank goodness we finally have proven it that you know we can take it and not have to bring so and so yeah. in to make it happen. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the state rankings, some of our guys don't really get the push that I think they should. That's all fine and good. We go down and we beat kids, and and they still stay ranked higher than us. So be it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like we we usually say, the proof's in the pudding, and I think that they proved that this year. So. Absolutely, yeah. well said, perfectly Thanks. said, and uh, congratulations Thank on you. getting that uh, title and seeing all the hard work all the dedication uh, and the family ties right. all come to fruition. Right. And I think you guys uh, will have great success to come. Thanks for joining us. And what we'll do after our break is we'll meet some of your wrestlers and see what they have to say about this season. Joining us now, a couple of runner-up wrestlers from Eastern View's uh, wrestling team this year. To my right, John Schaefer. To my left, Travis Gorham. Fellas, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, are you used to being on camera and talking about all the great accomplishments of the Cyclones? Not really. Uh, not really. <laughs> not really. No, not yeah. really. Right. Well, listen, congratulations on a fine season. Uh, let's tell the uh, viewing audience, uh, or I will, Travis Gorham uh, is a uh, senior, competed at 138 pounds this year, uh, was a runner-up. John Schaefer here on my right is a senior. Competed in the 152-pound weight class. He too was a runner-up, and uh, 
tell us, uh, if you will, I'll start with John. You guys went down to Portsmouth, long way from home, went down for the state uh, tournament after winning the region. Uh, and you knew about the Cyclones' uh, success in recent years. What was the mindset going in? What did you guys think your chances were of getting that coveted uh, team title? Um, we, we knew we had a good chance. Um, coach told us um, something earlier in the season um, that we always kept in our mind, but it's never stay satisfied. So we had a good look at the bracket, and we knew we were set good. Everyone was, had, a good, had a good shot at you know, bringing, bringing it home. And um, basically, it, it was hard for me because last year, that's where, I, that's where I left off, not going to States. So I knew, I had some, I knew going into the Portsmouth at Churchland High School, I had something to prove. And uh, yeah, and it's something that we all took in our mindset and was like, it might, it might be set up, but you know, you gotta take every opportunity to have something. Yeah, that was a great team effort. Yes, uh, Travis, uh, what, would, uh, what would you say about uh, uh, what John just said, following up on that, going into the state tournament, the sort of mindset and the uh, team mentality, if you will. Don't care who steps on the mat, we're gonna win. Mm -hmm. Very good, and, and well put. Now, John, you were a runner-up at 152 pounds, and that's quite an accomplishment at the 4A level. Uh, what kept you from getting on top of that uh, awards podium? Uh, wrestling Justin Phillips, uh, I wrestled him over the summer, but I, I beat him in the summer, but it's also when I had 10 or 15 pounds on him. And um, when I, we, we shook hands in the, at the first high up, he felt a lot stronger, and um, I, I think just my nerves, all that, at that, lo that high of a level, and just being happy, that's something I didn't follow the coach's rule. Like, I, I got satisfied, and uh, I, I think that really helped because, like, it got me where I wanted to be, but I didn't want to, you know, take that next step to winning that match. And uh, I got in on the first shot, and, yeah, he just did a little funk roll, and it, he caught me. So... It, caught you, meaning put you in a pinning situation? Yeah, he caught okay. me and put me in a pinning situation. Okay, and then, um, so, uh, when you say Justin Phillips, to our viewing audience, what school he competed at? Uh, he goes to Liberty Christian Academy. Liberty Christian Academy, okay. So, uh, but, but nevertheless, uh, you went in and uh, you, 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 you know, you, you got into the state finals and that's a huge, huge achievement in itself. Yes, sir. And uh, we're very proud of what you guys did. We'll come back to you here in just a second, Travis. You competed your way into the state championship match. Uh, who did you face in that match? Uh, Colby Allridge from Great Bridge. Okay, one of those Great Bridge wrestlers. And uh, how did you do against him? What happened? I came into the tournament sick. The day before, I had a fever of 102, but I had to wrestle through it. Got into the match, started getting sick again. Wasn't feeling too good. But if I felt better, I felt like I could beat him. Yeah. We don't get those do-overs in life, you know, and, and following wrestling, uh, and other sports during the winter like I do, it's not unusual to hear that the flu bug or something just hit a team. And you know, you always hope you don't get hit with it at the worst time. And so there really never is a good time, but I suppose the worst time would be when you're trying to compete in the state tournament. John, tell us uh, what you plan to do, uh, if you know, after graduation from Eastern View. Uh, I plan on attending a four-year college and um, most likely wrestling um, for them. Um, I've talked to a few, but right now my standout is going to Greensboro College um, down in North Carolina and wrestling for them. Okay. What about you, Travis? You're a senior. What do you plan on doing? I plan on going through apprentice school, wrestling, and welding. Okay. And uh, if, uh, if you could tell people, um, whoever asked you, what's the one thing you think you can take away as a life lesson from having been on the Eastern View wrestling team? Uh, hard work. Hard work comes through sacrifice and we sacrificed everything from the age of four. Just like from like say like we get invited to a birthday party or any any anywhere. We, we take those times and opportunities to like you know block those out and go to these tournaments and practice and to get better and I think we can take that from life and uh, just put towards life and um, make a better opportunity for ourselves and have a better life. Absolutely, and working hard will bode well for you in everything you do. What about you, Travis? Any comments? As Sean on? said, harder work, mm -hmm. leadership's good too. Okay. Hard work. Hard work and more hard work. Yeah, Dedication hard work. and sacrifice, Dedication, right? Sir. Hey, listen, congratulations on uh, your great achievement this year, individually and as a team. And thanks for joining us here today. Thank you, too. And uh, next, we'll get the opportunity to meet our two state champions. All right, joined now by our two state champions. To my right, Dylan Worth. To my left, Zach Brown. Fellows, thanks for joining us. 
Thank you. Are you getting tired of signing autographs or what? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a different experience. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Well, congratulations on, uh, hey, we got two state champ. I'm in the middle of two state champions. Yeah, I get told I get, I'm in pretty good company most of the time, and this is a really great example. How does it feel to, one, to have won an individual title, but then to come home knowing that your team finally captured that state title? Um, I think, well, we knew that we had the state title pretty much team-wise wrapped up before our finals matches. Um, so we kind of went out there with a little more, I guess you would say, confidence in that we already had one ring secured for us. And uh, I think the state title as a team was probably our bigger goal than just individual. Yes, we had to get the individual to get the team, but at the same time, the team title was what was most important to me, pretty much. And you know how important it is uh, when you start calculating these points is that uh, you, you guys may have been in the finals, but you had to hope that your teammates would come through the consolation rounds and pick up those very important team points, and apparently they did. They, def they definitely are the reason why we got the team title. Um, JJ, Austin, shoot, everybody that came through the uh, consolations, they picked it up and they worked all the way through and got got us the team title without doubt. Well, Zach, you know, I'm much more familiar with you. I've been knowing your family for a long time. I started seeing you wrestle when you were probably four and whatever it was. When you started out as a young kid, you had some good opportunities even up through last year. I think you had an injury that set you back some. Were you determined to come back this year and really make a statement? I think that's pretty much what's driven me since my freshman year to get this title. Um, I actually tore my knee in my first match of my freshman year so that's mm -hmm. the backstory to it mm -hmm. and coming in I wanted to be the first four-time state champ at Eastern U and at the end of fresh the freshman year I knew I couldn't get the after placing six I knew I couldn't get the four that I wanted but I was gonna shoot for three I came through sophomore year and I placed second to the same kid that won it at the uh, Stanley Smeltzer yes, of uh, Smithfield. Yes, sir. Right. And I mean, right after. Not, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, he's, at, he's now at Virginia Tech, right? Wrestling. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. But at the same time, it just, you still want to get that mm -hmm. three. And I think right after that, it was just, it was in my mind. I'm not letting, I'm not letting myself just get one. I'm at least getting two out of this. Yeah. And then help us, help the team as much as I can get it. Absolutely, and I think you're in great position for that. Um, also, uh, and then Dylan Work. Dylan, we haven't really, haven't had a chance to really meet you. Uh, were you off of everyone's radar, or were you the guy people knew about, and they said, you better watch this guy coming up through the ranks at Eastern View? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't really out there as much as Zach was. I, mm -hmm. was. I was there, but I was never, like, really out there. But my freshman year, I had, um, I had, going back and forth with Austin uh, for the starting spot. Austin Kalikas. Austin Kalikas, right. yeah. And then I we had a wrestle-off, and I beat him for the wrestle-off, the three best out of three, or best out of, yeah, best out of three wrestle-off. And I'd won two out of, the two out of three. And my, I'd won districts, regionals, I got second, and then states, my state finals match my freshman year. I was losing three to one, or yeah, two to one, and I almost had a reversal in five seconds in the third period. I almost won it, but I ended up losing. I remember that match, Jen in Salem. Was that the get to from Great Bridge? Yeah, Brandon Morales from Great Bridge. Oh well, yeah, yeah, Morales. Then this year, you come back as a sophomore. You compete at 113. You win the state title. What was your championship match like? Who did you face? I had faced. Um, Powhatan, what's his okay. name? JD. Yeah, JD. From Powhatan? From Powhatan, yeah. And they've got a really good team down there, right. Okay. Yeah. So regionals, I was beating them 6-3, to three, and then at the end of that match of regionals, he had beaten me in overtime by one point. And then you saw him again in the state finals? Then I seen him again in the state mm. finals. And that one, I was just all, all practice all week. I was driven to beat him. I, Every move he hit on me in regionals, I practiced move mm -hmm. 10 times, like 20 times. Just kept going, hitting it, hitting it. Then state finals, I just 
relaxed, kept my cool. I knew I had nothing to lose. And he was scared because I broke his nose actually at the regionals, so he was hurting. And So you're a physical wrestler, is that it? No. <laughs> and then the States, I would just, once I had my points, mm -hmm. I knew I was like, I'm not giving this up. And I just kept my mentality. Well, it my, sounded like a great game plan you really did your homework going in zach what about your state championship match um i think the preparation was the main key for all of our state runs um that whole actually the week before we went in districts we started i mean we run usually during practices but we started extra push at the end of practice we would go 30 45 some close to an hour sometimes just out here at the basketball courts or in the hallways just sprinting and getting our stamina up and just getting that mindset down of nobody's taking this away from us this year. And I think just the preparation in that and then the preparation in the room, like I, I was working hard throughout the whole season, but it got to that last week right before States and I knew, I knew who, who I was pretty much gonna have throughout the, um, throughout the run and throughout each round. And I didn't really practice for any specific person. I pretty much just practiced to wrestle like myself and mm -hmm. just wrestle how I like to wrestle and go after people. And that finals match, I was a little nervous right before, but as soon as I got into it, as soon as the whistle blew, all the nerves just kind of went away. And kid uh, bulled in right off the bat, scored, I knew. It's game time. It's time mm -hmm. to go and just keep going, keep scoring, and just keep putting points on the board and don't let him the, them score. <laughs> All right, so you ended up winning your match by? Uh, I think it was 9-0. On was a major a decision. Point. Okay. So um, congratulations to both of you for winning these state titles, but more importantly, we're being part of a state championship team, which we believe has been a long time coming, but just really a matter of time. And you know the kind of work that your dad has put into it and all the, the youth and all this. Uh, you guys are coming back next year. Dylan, you'll be a junior. Zach, you'll be a senior. What are you going to do in the off season as you approach, uh, as you put the actual regular season behind you, which is behind you, but what are you going to do in the off season in the summer to gear up for wrestling? Um, well, I'm going to wrestle more. I'm going to hit the weight room and put some weight on and just be ready and be in shape. You cannot. Being, wrestling shape is the hardest shape you gotta be in. Mm -hmm. You gotta really be into it. But I'm just gonna stay healthy, stay in shape, and make sure I'm at least up near wrestling shape. You're gonna be really scary next year. I'm glad you and I aren't in the same weight class. I'd say the same thing about you, Zach. What are you gonna do in the off season? Uh, or is there an off season? <laughs> off season, uh, haven't really heard about that for a long time. But um, Not in your vocabulary. <laughs> no, sir. Uh, I think it's the same thing with him. I mean, weight room, I've already started that, been doing that for the past three, four years. So, I mean, that's the annual thing, I guess. But um, I think I'm just gonna, I've been pushing it harder and gonna keep pushing it harder this year, definitely. And I got some national tournaments that I'm planning on doing, uh, NHSCAs, probably Fargo, and then I might even go out and try the, um, for the world team trials and see how that goes out there and that's pretty much <laughs> it sounds like a lot wow i feel like a celebrity in between two uh, champions here thanks for joining us uh, we've had a chance to talk to our state champions who are they dylan worth sophomore won the team type won the state uh, individual title at 113 pounds teammate zach brown jr won the state championship at 195 pounds and you can be sure we'll be hearing a lot of good stuff from these kids in the future Thanks for joining us. Now joined on my right by J.J. Laird, and on my left by Blake Sheets. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Hey, we got to talk about Eastern View Wrestling. What a great accomplishment it was for your team to win a state title. And to get the state title, you got to have good con contribution from everyone. Not everyone wins a state title, but you got to pick up points for your team. And you guys picked up points. Blake, you were fourth at 106 pounds. Yes, sir. JJ, you were fourth at 126 pounds. Yes, sir. What was your state tournament like for you? I'll ask you first, JJ, because last year you were in Salem when they had the 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A kids there. 
This year they split the tournament and they sit in 3A and 4A kids down to Portsmouth. I didn't get a chance to see you, but I remember perfectly well last year in Salem, uh, you got to the state finals, uh, had a pretty tough draw against uh, Tyrese Wade and William Fleming. What do you remember about that match and how did that inspire you to come back this season? It's kind of overwhelming, a big stadium like that. Um, this year is kind of smaller, less overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Wanted to get it first, but it didn't really work out so well. Tell me how your tournament played out for you. Uh, to get fourth tells me that uh, you lost at some point in the championship round, rounds, but you had to come back through the consolations. And to get third or fourth, you usually got to wrestle quite a few matches to get there. How did it play out for you? Well, I was in the championship round, I got DQ'd because I won a legal slam. And then I came back and won, I think, two or three matches. And I pinned those kids. And then I lost in third and fourth place to like, Five to zero, I think. Okay, so you finished fourth as a sophomore at 126 pounds. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to your teammate, Blake Sheeds. Blake, uh, you were fourth at 106 as a sophomore. Uh, how did your tournament go for you? Went pretty good for me this year. Fourth place, pretty good. I want to come back next year and do stronger than I did this year, though. Okay, now last year as a freshman, where were you as far as uh, the varsity team? Back up for 106. At 106, okay. So then you're in this uh, varsity starting lineup this year at 106, and we got down to the state tournament. Uh, fourth is, uh, of course, very respectable. How did the tournament go for you? Uh, where uh, did you feel like the, the, the turning point came for you? Right after I lost in the semis. Uh, so you got to the championship semis. Mm -hmm. That's where you lost. Uh, do you remember your opponent? Yeah, he, um, his name was Jack. I don't remember what team he was from. Though. Okay, what happened in that match? Uh, he just beat me because he was a lot taller and lengthier and had a lot of stretch on me. Just, yeah. That's a hard matchup. You know, styles make matches, you know, and he had a lot of leverage against you, didn't he? Okay, let's go to your match, uh, JJ. I've seen you in the finals before. I know that you know, you can, you're a tough wrestler who can battle through matches, but you get down to this uh, tournament this year, uh, the DQ obviously sets you back. Yeah. But you got into the match for third and fourth place. What happened in that one? Kills was bigger. He, he was cutting a lot of weight. He was a lot stronger than me, but calls weren't called that they should have been, but it didn't really go my way. But they are what they are, aren't they? Yeah. All right. You guys will be coming back next year, obviously, uh, with uh, uh, big plans. Tell me, tell everyone, what was it like to be on this state championship team? It was exciting, something crazy. It was like a family bond thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys awesome. were so close the year before, and it was that disappointment not winning it. Then you yeah. came back and you won it this year. Came back strong. And uh, everyone in the community, uh, hey, you guys are the heroes, right? Yeah. All right. What about it, uh, Blake? What's your uh, take on that? Really cool. Yeah. Proud. Would you like to do it again? Yes, sir. Did pretty good feeling. Yeah. Yes, sir. And next year, hope to come back win it again for the team. Absolutely. We'll look forward to that. Uh, J.J. Laird, on my right, was fourth at the state tournament, 4A classification at 126 pounds. Blake Sheets, to my left here, was fourth at 106 pounds as a sophomore. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. And uh, congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Joined now by two more state placement winners. To my right, Drew Sharina. To my left, Austin Kalikas. Thanks for joining us here today. Thank you. We're celebrating the achievement of the Cyclones wrestling team. Do you know anything about it? Oh, it feels great just to go out there and win states as a team. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it just felt great when coming home, knowing that you're the state champ and your team's the state champ. Well, not me as state champ, but the team got it. First to do it from EV. First uh, team uh, in any sport. So you not only win the 4A state wrestling championship, but it represents the school's first ever. So, you, you know, maybe you don't think of it this way, but really you guys are the heroes around here. Yeah, coming home and just having everybody in school clap saying congratulations, it just feels great. And the Culper Media Network wanted to be a part of that to bring the tribute to the team. That's why we're here today. Um, and so, Drew, let me start with you because you've got a last name that's familiar to a lot of us. You've had a couple of brothers before you wrestle at Eastern View. We had Brett, mm -hmm. and before him was Logan, and yes, both sir. of your brothers are wrestling in college. In fact, uh, they had some successful high school careers, 
And Brett was an individual state champion, as you know, mm -hmm. but his team didn't win it, and I'm sure that that disappointed him a little. And now you come along, and now you're part of a, a, steam, a team state uh, championship team, and this got to feel really good to you, particularly since uh, you were a placement winner, and you've still got a couple more seasons to make your imprint. Oh, yeah, it feels great to me, and uh, I know Brett always wanted this, and so did Logan, and I'm kind of glad it happened to me. I'm the first one in the Sharina to win states as a team. Mm -hmm. Brett was the first to win a uh, state by himself, but from I the family. From the family, right? Logan came up short, but he wishes he could have that match back, and Brett's just wishing he could have that team win that states and come home and feel the same. That I did. And it's a great family. Did Logan and Brett contact you and extend oh, congratulations? They were watching it right from the get-go, mm -hmm. right from the beginning, first match. They texting my mom and dad saying, "Oh, did Drew get the takedown? Did Drew get the takedown?" watching it on tracker flow. Mm -hmm. So they were, they were there watching the match. They were there watching it, whether they were there physically or not, right? No, they were like watching it on that little screen. That's what I meant. They yeah. were watching it, whether. Okay, so congratulations, Drew. Fifth Thank place you. finish at 145 pounds. And to me, 145 has been one of those, you know, three or four weight classes in the history of wrestling that you just catch all these studs of these weight, that weight class. Oh, yeah. You never get a break. So 145 is a very tough weight class, not that 132 isn't, but it's always stood out as having uh, a star-studded lineup uh, with, these, with these teams. Uh, let's get back to you here in just a minute. Austin, uh, your name's familiar to me, uh, Kalikas. It's not a name we hear every day, is it? Nah, not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. Uh, is your family from here? My dad grew up in North Carolina, so mm -hmm. then we moved up here a while ago, he did. Okay, now you're a junior this year, and so you've had some uh, experience at the state tournament, at, both as a freshman and sophomore. You were fourth this year. Have you, uh, is that your best uh, finish, or had you, had you done better your freshman? That was my best. That was your best? Okay. Uh, what do you think was uh, the key to the team really coming together this year and actually uh, getting to the top of that championship podium? Well, for me, I think we all came out there with heart. We all came out there with a the mindset to go, okay, this is the year, we got to do it this year. And the seniors, they were trying to pep us up, trying to get in there. We got a couple seniors in the finals. And that was the goal right there, it was just to win states as a team. And we had people come through and Conti rounds came through, placed and higher and uh, got to a point to where if we win one or two, three matches in the finals, we're coming home with the state champion and it did. And so, and you guys know that how critical it is uh, for the team members to pick up those points and those wrestlebacks in the consolation rounds. Because without that, you could have three or four individual champions and still not win it. Yeah, that's what, that's what kind of is like horrible about it. But it all matters, it's gotta be a team commitment. And that's what we did that, that day, that weekend. Never give up, keep fighting. And that seems to be the theme for, for the Eastern View wrestlers is never give up the hard work and the dedication. Austin, you were fourth at 132 as a junior, will be coming back next year as a senior. What are your plans in the off season and what do you look forward to uh, into the next, next season? Work out, go to camps, not gain too much weight. Just keep going through the whole summer until next talking season. about your weight, are you looking to maybe to come back to 132 or? It's around 132, 138. 132, 138. Okay, Drew, in the off season, if there is such a thing for wrestlers, what are you gonna do and what, what, do, you hope to, uh, what do you hope to be next year as far as your weight and competition? Next year, I'm looking for like 152 range, but I gotta play football because that's what my family also does. So, but I'm gonna be training during the summer, going to camps. We're going down to Disney Duels and NHSCAs. That's where we're going, and uh, that's just what we're gonna do. We're gonna train. We're gonna come with the mindset of last year and this year. Yeah, and we'll get a chance to see you during football season then. Uh, and we remember quite well during football season calling your name and number a lot. Oh yeah. And uh, you guys had a, a good run again, and maybe that'll happen again for you in football. But for now, again, let me say congratulations to you individually and as a team uh, for getting where exactly where you wanted to be atop that uh, podium as a state championship team. So we've had a chance here to talk to Drew Sharita, a sophomore who finished fifth at 145 pounds at the state tournament a few weeks ago. And to my left, Austin Kalikas, a junior who finished fourth at 132 pounds. Thanks for joining us Thank and uh, good luck in your next endeavors. All right, next up, we'll have the opportunity to speak to our two state champions. 
Now we're back and I've got our final placement winners seated next to me on my right, Kyle Jenkins. Uh, and on my left, CJ Taylor. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be here, sir. All right, I'd like for you to tell us your life story in about 30 seconds. Just kidding. I'm gonna put you on the spot like that, Kyle. Kyle Jenkins is a senior on the Cyclone wrestling team. And you wrestled in the 220 pound weight class. Yes, sir. And you finished fifth at the state tournament. CJ Taylor is a sophomore. He competed in the 160 pound weight class and finished third. I want to say congratulations to both of you like I did to your teammates for getting down to that state tournament and placing and how important it is as a team to get everyone placing to win that team title. Thank you. All right, Kyle, you've been around for a while. You're a senior. Uh, your last name is Jenkins. Uh, you think you might be the first person in Culpeper County to ever wrestle whose last name was Jenkins? No, sir. No, I don't think so. In fact, we were just talking before we went on the air about uh, your family lineage. Uh, your grandfather is Henry Jenkins. Yes, sir. And I've known him. He was wrestling in the 70s, and he's been a part of it. And you've got Eddie Jenkins, uh, your great uncle, is uh, in one of the assistant coaches. And your dad is Chad Jenkins. It just sort of goes on and on. But uh, keeping that tradition going. Uh, in the wrestling family. Uh, you were fifth uh, this year. C.J. Taylor, uh, perhaps uh, maybe a little more unknown to me. Uh, you were not in the starting lineup necessarily last year as a freshman. You had a tough kid in front of you, but you certainly broke into the starting lineup this year. You go down to the state tournament, you finish third at 160 pounds. And in fact, the write-up in the Star Exponent following that uh, state tournament championships, uh, your coach, described you as the MVP of the tournament or the team. That's quite an honor. Uh, why do you think he dubbed you the MVP? You must have had a good tournament. Uh, I mean, I went out there and I just felt like the air and it felt right to me. So went out there, I wrestled and I just competed with everyone because I knew I could do it. I was trying to do it the whole season and they finally came in, all the hard work that I was doing in the room. And you had lost at some point in the championship rounds where you get bounced in the consolation rounds. How many matches do you remember having to win just to get that third place finish? I had to win two more. Mm -hmm. But when you got into the match for third and fourth place, what do you remember about that particular match? Oh, I was losing five to one against Sam from Palatan, okay, senior, uh, and I didn't want to lose, and I was like, I want to stand on the podium, and it will happen, because I saw only top three was standing on the podium, and once I got hurt in the, because he hurt my shoulder, I was like, oh heck no, nah, because he drank a soda and was pointing up to the crowd, crowd going wild, and now I was like, are we about to go wrestle this match and not pin him? in the last 10, 10, 20 seconds of the second period. You were down and it came back and won by pin. What is it about the soda you were saying? I sort of lost something in translation there because I, wrestlers don't usually drink sodas, do they? Basically what he was saying was that I was trash and he was gonna beat me. Oh, well that gave you just that much more incentive to beat him. And like you say, only the top three still on that podium. Yeah. Congratulations for coming back, the resiliency there. All right, we'll come back to you, CJ. Kyle Jenkins, wow, you've been around. Uh, we talked about wrestling for a good while, 220 pound weight class. To me, you know, ever since they revised the weight classes and they had 215 and 220, basically the same thing, that's always been like a linebacker's weight class. You get a good linebacker off your football team, he loses about 10 pounds and he's all muscle out there at 220. How did you find the competition this year in that weight class? Oh, it was, it was definitely pretty hard. It wasn't. It wasn't as easy as past school. Actually, I take it back. The past couple of years has been pretty hard, but I say this is probably one of the toughest years I've had. Okay, you finished fifth, uh, and you're a senior. Uh, had you previously finished higher uh, in your high school career at the state tournament? No, sir. Okay. My sophomore year, actually, I got sixth. Okay. Last year, I got hurt, so I didn't make it as far. Okay, so you finished on a very positive note, your senior season with a fifth place finish. Uh, have you looked ahead to the future and what you might do since you're a senior now? Uh, yes, sir. actually I've been thinking about doing 
HVAC. You go into that type of business. Okay. And how important, or what did it feel like to you uh, after all these years and the team being so close at the state tournament, only to lose to Falk here, a great bridge. What did it feel like this year to actually get over the hump and know that you guys were crowned king? It was one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. Actually, finally being able to beat them, saying that we won this year and we were the first team to win at EV. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely a great feeling. Yeah, ever since then, you guys have been going around signing autographs, right? Good <laughs> celebrities in the school. Yeah. All right. Uh, CJ, uh, you were third this year as a sophomore in a tough weight class. And as you pointed out, you were down in that match for third place and you had the resiliency to come back and your opponent sort of motivated you without uh, intending to. What are your plans now as you come back uh, thinking about your junior season uh, as you look ahead to that? Uh, any, any goals at this point? Um, yes, I'm going to come back next year, work even harder, get first place, and then I'll have my nice ring, get my ring from Super States as well, and we'll be all good. Okay, and so now wrestling season officially is over. Either one of you guys playing any sports in the spring? Well, no. This is my senior year, I won't be wrestling. I mean, not wrestling, but I won't be able to play any more sports unless I go to college. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. I thought with your height, uh, your, uh, oh, wait. you could go you in. You said spring. Oh. Spring, spring, yeah. Like lacrosse. Um, I've thought about playing lacrosse, but. They usually recruit guys like you off the football and wrestling team as defenders to the big sticks to stop people from getting to that goal. Yes, sir. We've seen some good football players turn into very good lacrosse players. Not putting any pressure on you at all, but uh, it's always great to uh, chat with wrestlers and like I said, I've known so many people in your family for so long, and I know they're all proud of you. Way to keep that tradition going. Good luck to you um, in your next endeavor, whether it's uh, HVAC or whatever it is. We know you'll succeed. Thank and you. CJ, we've got a couple more years to watch you in action, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you're pretty excited about that. Yeah, I got a track to get my conditioning up. I'm going to do that for now, and I'm going to do some off-season wrestling. Like in two weeks, I'm going to NHSEA's individual wrestling 52. I'm going to go down because we have a three pound allowance. Yeah, I want to say congratulations to you again for the uh, praise your coach gave you uh, about you in the article uh, for Coach Brown uh, to call you the MVP of the team in that tournament. That's quite an honor. Congratulations. And congratulations on being part of this championship team. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here today. Welcome again, Coach Brown, to our segment. And now we welcome the athletic director, Mark Settle, uh, to our tribute here today of the fine wrestling team. Coach, uh, or Mark, let me start with you. Uh, we've talked to Coach Brown and his wrestlers today uh, for their perspective on getting the team title in wrestling and uh, the sort of feedback they've gotten from other people in the school. Tell me from your vantage point as the AD, and you've been here since the beginning, uh, how, what's it been like for you as the AD? What kind of response you, are you getting from people as far as the accomplishments of this team? It's funny you ask, because I came from the Virginia High School League meetings today in Richmond, and uh, we go around the table and we talk about the, each champion from the fall and the winter, and mm -hmm. you know, it's the first time I got to hear you know, state champion Eastern View for wrestling. And, uh, so, you know, it's, and everybody com comes up and congratulates you, you know, the, the network of friends that we have and colleagues. So th that was pretty cool today. I my first chance to do that and uh, uh, hope we have more opportunities in the future. So it, mm -hmm. not only with wrestling, but any other sport. But uh, so it's kind of cool to have, and you, you get some emails from across the state and uh, Trisha Oliver, and, uh, she was one of the first to text me, the congratulations and so forth. So uh, it's pretty cool on my end. And uh, I'd like to have a few more opportunities. I'm sure. Uh, and, and I'm sure there's something particularly special about when it's at first, you know, because uh, Eastern View's been in existence since 2008. Our 10th year. Yeah, and, you know, you've been at the AD from the beginning, and Coach Brown's been at the helm from the beginning. And you have that luxury in your football program with Coach Hatfield. So you guys have been there from the beginning, so when you get these championships, it's got to feel pretty special to you. And actually, we thought field hockey might have a chance to get there first mm -hmm. to the podium. And uh, they've been real close. And uh, Coach Allen was a runner-up this year for the first time. And uh, 
but we thought that she would have a chance. And then, uh, you know, there's always been individual state champions in track and wrestling, swim. But uh, to have the first team, you know, it's been kind of a running joke among the coaching fraternity who's going to get there first. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and Coach Brown and Eddie and, and Chad and those guys, I've always said if there was one group that I would handpick, wrestling might have my favorite there because I just see the amount of work that they mm -hmm. do and not taking anything from other programs, but uh, these guys have worked uh, tirelessly for 10 years to, to get to this. So it just didn't happen overnight. It, it was, it, it's been a long journey. I've seen those guys in the Cobra wrestling and they, every night we have basketball games, they're out there working. And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's, that's been rewarding. And, you know, you always want to showcase hard work. And uh, so they, they represent Eastern View very well. Well, that's well said. And in fact, uh, I think Coach Brown would probably agree with me that when you guys have run your tournaments here uh, or had your tri or quad meets in wrestling, uh, you've always been a big part of it. Uh, you've always treated wrestling like, hey, it's, just, it's, it's a great sport. It's very important. We're going to do the best we can. And you guys have run some good tournaments. And I, I think that that's some, uh, noteworthy. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, we, we missed out on the David Brown this past, mm -hmm. this past season because the School calendar wasn't in our favor, but uh, Coach Brown and I have already talked about uh, securing a weekend and getting that message out. Uh, now that we're state champions, we're hoping people would like to come in and have a round with us uh, in a tournament. So hopefully he can take care of that part and recruiting teams to come in and get that back where we want it to be. And, uh, you know, we're, we're talking today in our meetings about the future sites of other tournaments coming up for regional and state. And so, uh, yeah, we, we, we want, you know, wrestling is just as big to us as the other sports that are, are you know, some people call more mainstream. So uh, mm -hmm. we treat them like one of our own. I got a question to ask you a little bit later in our segment. Thank you very much for that input, Mark. Coach, when we go back to you, uh, we had a chance to speak to each and every one of your uh, placement winners. And, uh, well, you know, you go down the list, I mean, you're talking about 10 wrestlers, and when those guys all place, you're going to get a good team result out of that. Exactly. Um, you know, I, I, we kind of touched on it a little bit on our our intro in, but, you know, last year with, with having five guys in the state finals, we were kind of blown up. Everybody was real excited. Everything looked real good. And then, you know, and unfortunately, didn't go our way in any of the matches. A um, few questionable calls at, at 13, especially that we kind of look back on now and can be okay can be okay with because of what, you know, Dylan finished out this year. But mm -hmm. that match, I think, was kind of taken away from him last year. A um, couple of our guys, I don't know exactly what happened with them, and it, and it was frustrating. But the main issue with it was, is like you said, with 10 guys, I think uh, two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, we placed all 11 that we took. This year we took 12, we placed 10. But, the, the, you know, it comes back to that same thing that we spoke about earlier, is just when those guys came back through the consolation rounds, that was – you know, I mean, that was the, the, the deciding factor. And, and to get 10 guys to step up. And, and, you know, the other two guys, they fought their hearts out. It just didn't mm -hmm. go our way that weekend. But to get 10 guys to come in and, and put the points on the board, and not just put the points on the board by finishing that sixth place, you know, to come in and come back through the constellations and get in that third and fourth place match, mm -hmm. win out at fifth place, and at least put points back on the board. All those points accumulated up and really made a big difference. You know? And in fact, uh, in the write-up after your state championship win, uh, you were quoted as saying that uh, you felt uh, C.J. Taylor might be the MVP of the tournament. Most definitely. I mean, what a what a tribute to a kid who's a sophomore who finished third uh, to come through. What what were you referring to when you? Uh, uh, you know, C.J. is is one of those guys, and we've seen it in our room before. Um, in the room. You, you'll see the technique and you're like, man, he's he's there. And then we get to a match and it's kind of like he just waits around, waits around, and he would get, it would get real frustrating. Um, with having CJ's dad on the program and helping coach, uh, Chris Taylor is an excellent mm -hmm. asset for us. And, and he was, you know, we had these conversations many times and he said the same thing. So just to see CJ take it upon himself and just, I mean, I guess break his shell is the best way to put it. But, you know, to come in as a four seed out of the region, didn't mm -hmm. really have the best region, was still a little lackadaisical on the mat. And we was like, you know, what's going on here? But to come in and, and to take a number one out first thing and then to keep just banging through and, and you know, putting kids on their back and putting not only getting the wins, but giving us bonus points in the mm -hmm. final match there, you know, I mean, that bonus points are two points. 16 and a half points comes very hard in wrestling tournaments, you know, and to win by that, those two points made it up, you know, in, along the way. So 
he definitely CJ was was a major asset, and and all these guys were a major asset. But I think is I don't want to say CJ was a surprise. It was just a, a good feeling to finally see him come around and and us to see his his technique and his abilities actually come to come to you know the show up when we needed them. Yeah. Okay, and I always thought that if a wrestler, <clears throat> pardon me, finishes third in a tournament like that, it usually indicates that he lost somewhere in the championship rounds, had to battle through the consolation rounds, and if he expected to have a better tournament, he could lose a little bit of that edge and not actually win the third place. Right. But apparently, your kid uh, didn't lose that focus. In fact, his description is his opponent there actually gave him a little further incentive. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, and. The one thing about CJ's matches was, I guess, for for location, if nothing else, but it kind of it, both the mats that he wrestled the majority of his matches on were right at our fan base location, and I mean he just he lit the fan base up. The guys were screaming every, and you know, our guys were coming over the barrier and giving him hugs when he was mm -hmm. coming off, as they was doing everybody. You know, like I said, Saturday morning was a very very joyous time because we really seen them show up but i mean just to do it right there in front of our fan base to have people like you know man where'd he come from mm -hmm. that was very very exciting and not only was it exciting but it, it kind of like i say it lit the spark for us to keep motivating on and them guys to keep putting the matches together and that really you know it, not only did he do it for himself but he brought the team around and made those guys believe in themselves i think a lot more and, and you know we won some big matches. I mean, Austin Kalikas took out a kid that um, from um, Shockey is the, the young man's last name, and, and the man's an excellent young wrestler. But I mean, he he, he beat uh, Austin at NHSCA Nationals this year by a tech fall, basically, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And to come back and be down by two points with you know 45 seconds on the on the clock, and to come back and get a pin for us. You know, all those just accumulated up and made a big, big difference, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Well said. We go back to Mark Settle. Mark, um, I never did find the answer to this question. And of course, it's it really can't, it wouldn't change anything at this point. Just curious. But, you know, for several years, we had the 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A t uh, state tournament down in Salem. They split it up this year. They put the 1A, 2A kids back in Salem. 3A, 4A in Portsmouth, a place I know nothing about. How, do you remember how that all came about while they decided to do the split? Yeah, that actually a couple of years ago, uh, Churchland was supposed to have the uh, state wrestling tournament for 3 and 4A. Um, and actually it was Eastern Views motion on the floor at the general session to get us back to Salem mm -hmm. last year. Um, and the schools in the southeast uh, corner down the Tidewater area, they just feel like they like to showcase some of their talent down there so they don't have to travel all the way to Salem. And mm -hmm. of course, then you got Christiansburgs and those guys saying, right. well, why are we traveling east? So, it's just a matter of keeping some balance of uh, where these uh, tournaments are held. And, uh, you know, church, and we, as a league, we learned a lot. Uh, there's some discussion today about, you know, what did we learn and, and what are we going to do better? And even thinking about alter alternative locations and, and how to, to rethink wrestling. And, uh, you know, a lot of the colleges offer venues, but they come with a price tag. Mm. And, you know, we'd mm. like to showcase every sport, but uh, there's a financial consequence with every decision. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, they did say that to this year's wrestling meet for 3 4 a was the uh, most uh, attended in the last five years hmm. uh, based on ticket sales and so forth. So, uh, you know, some things went wrong in Salem. Uh, the bleachers didn't come out and that frustrated some people. And so, but trust me, the, the high school league uh, brass, they're, they're rethinking everything. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And I knew you would know, and I just I was just dying to find out because no one ever no one ever really knew why we had to split this year, but yep. it's, I, I missed out on it because I, I really didn't get a chance to see you guys. Of course, Christiansburg had another fine team. And uh, I was thinking, hypothetically, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we got six state champions in Virginia with the six classifications. Uh, if you had a dual meet with the six teams, would Eastern View do pretty good in that? Uh, our, boys, um, our boys do well in dual meets. Yeah. I like to say it that way. Um, that, that's kind of that uh, we, we get our six pounder and our 13 pounder to, to uh, you know, like the spark, I guess, as you say, mm -hmm. and, and then we kind of roll off of that. Um, we had a pretty good show in this year. Um, we actually beat St. Chris head to head. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some talk about it. they had some starters out, but just so everybody knows, we had a few starters yeah. out too. That's the way it um, works. So, you know, I feel very comfortable with that. Um, mm -hmm. 
I, I've looked across the board and, and seen the other teams that place high. You know, dual meets can be a whole different fashion of things. And, right. and the biggest thing that you got to keep on dual meets is pair ups. And to be honest with you, looking across the board, I think that some of the better teams that, that might have placed bigger at their state tournament, we would have had a good, uh, a very good chance of, of a victory against with a dual meet. And then some of the teams that, you know, maybe not are on the highest list on like the 6A and 5A, um, you know, Christianburg and us on the dual meet I think would be very interesting. I know the coach pretty well, and we've kind of been discussing a few things and hopefully going to work that into next season. Um, but it all comes back to pair-ups. Mm -hmm. And so that's really, you know, we, me and my son, my boys, the wrestlers and all, we discuss it all the time, joking around. And, and we, you know, I, as a coach, I go home, I sit, and I look at who did what, and I say, oh, we've been all right right here. So as far as dual meets and stuff, what I would love to see is, you know, um, with the current status of a district tournament and how it's working, you know, if, if we're going to keep going out of this route where we're basically just going into a region and loading the region and, and that region feeds into the state tournament as far as the qualification uh, process. If I know that there is a whole lot of talk about it, but a, a top three, top four out of each, each group mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a team dual meets the week before we go to regions would be a, I mean, would be awesome as a wrestling coach. I mean, absolutely. Penn, Pennsylvania group does it. You know, a lot of the other big team, other big states do it. The one thing about it is with Pennsylvania and, and these other schools, you know, I mean, Pennsylvania is, is the wrestling mecca. And with us, we, you know, Virginia has some very solid talent. We wrestle against them all the time. And we really would like to see us be able to grow to that level. And, and you know, the venues and stuff like that, all that stuff is, is very, it's very controversial, I guess, as far as the different things. I know financially is always mm -hmm. the issue. So when we, as coaches, when we step on it, we don't see the financial issue as much because we don't know the paperwork on it. But as, as, as far as us, you know, we would love to see everybody, at least the top four or, or three through six a at the same venue one and two even you know if we could work it out i know that that's a big big gift so mm -hmm. um but as far as back to the dual me thing yeah I, I think that we're we're very comfortable in saying that that we would have finished we would have finished up in the mix i like to put it that yeah. way i know exactly what you mean well said a lot of potential there for opportunities to match up and that sort of thing coach thanks for joining me uh, mark settle the ad thanks for joining us the final thought here i wanted to say though in the 10 wrestlers we interviewed, the common themes that came out was uh, hard work. Hard work and then more hard work. And that seems to be the driving, uh, the, the understanding that you've got to put that hard work in or you're just not going to get where you want to be. Yeah, luckily enough, I guess it's finally sinking in with them, right? Mm, so absolutely. After so many years, they don't have any choice anymore, right? they got to listen or, or do something. <laughs> uh, you've been doing it a long time, and I think the continuity and everything and the, and the dedication certainly paid off. Congratulations. Very fortunate that our year turned to be this year. So, yeah. Yeah. We're looking for big things again in the future. Mark Settle, thanks for joining us, and uh, congratulations uh, you. in, in your vantage point, and I know it means a lot to you and the school. And we appreciate Corporate Media Network showcasing their fine program. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks for joining us. Eric. Thank you. Good Appreciate luck next it. year. In fact, that's the last question. Any any uh, <laughs> any view toward next year? Uh, we're not going to we're not going to put any uh, any voodoo on us, you know, that <laughs> far, but um, we're we're very solid. We're returning a lot of good kids. Um, we we are we are graduating off a very solid squad, but um, I think that we'll be I think we'll be comfortably strong next year. I think we're going to be okay. Hopefully that uh, my biggest wish out of, or my biggest goal out of this whole thing is that the interest keeps growing in it and that we get more and more kids as they come into the high school from the middle school programs to be interested and to get out into that sport and give it a try. So hopefully we can kind of mesh that next group together and, and go take another you know shot at it. Yep. Sounds good. Once again, congratulations. Thanks for being with us. Sure thing. All right. Well, that'll do it for us here today. Hope you enjoyed tuning in and hearing from the Victoria Cyclone wrestling team, their coach, their coach and their wrestlers. And, uh, you know, if you see the coaches and the wrestlers anywhere in town, make sure you go up to them and congratulate them for a great job and a crowning achievement this year to win that 4A state title. This has been a historic season for the wrestling team. It's also been a historic season for Eastern View High School. Uh, but we're out of time. And for Johnny Krawchuk and Jeff Stanfield, I'm Mark O'Connell saying thanks for tuning in with this reminder. We'll be back on the air soon because lacrosse is just around the corner. Until then, so long everyone, and thanks for watching the Culpepper Media Network. <laughs>